We have considered the bioenergetics of closed systems and arrived at the equation delta H equals delta G0 plus T delta S. We'll apply this equation to see how delta H or enthalpy change and delta G0, the standard free energy change, can be determined for chemical reactions. We can measure the enthalpy change or delta H in a bomb calorimeter like the one cartooned on this slide. As the reaction proceeds, the change in temperature in the calorimeter will be detected as a change in the temperature in the water in the outer jacket. If the jacket contains, for example, 100 milliliters of water, and the temperature rises by 5 degrees by the time the reaction reaches equilibrium, then the reaction must have generated 500 calories. Remember that a calorie is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 milliliter of water by 1 degree Celsius. OK, here are two examples. If you burn 0.18 grams of glucose in a calorimeter, the temperature of that 100 mils of water would rise by 6.73 degrees Celsius. That would mean that the reaction yielded 673 calories, or 6.73 times the 100 mils of water in the jacket. If you had burned 1,000 times as much glucose, or a mole of glucose, 180 grams of it, it would have generated 673,000 calories, or 673 kilocalories. OK, that means the enthalpy change, or delta H, is equal to minus 673 kilocalories per mole of combusted glucose. A reaction that liberates heat is defined as exothermic, and the delta H of an exothermic reaction is going to be negative. Now, you should recognize this chemical equation as the one for respiration. Now the second example describes photosynthesis, the exact opposite of respiration. It should be no surprise that the enthalpy change, or delta H, for this reaction is plus 673 kilocalories per mole of glucose made. A reaction that absorbs heat will have a positive delta H and is by definition endothermic. So we can measure the enthalpy change, or delta H, directly using the calorimeter. We can determine the standard free energy change, or delta G0, indirectly by knowing the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products in a chemical reaction, and using the Boltzmann equation shown here, where R is the gas constant, and T is the standard temperature, and the KEQ is the equilibrium constant for the reaction. You can see that the gas constant is 1.987 calories per mole degree, and you may remember that the temperature, the standard temperature, is 298 degrees Kelvin, or 25 degrees Celsius. Let's talk about getting the equilibrium constant. Here's how you do it. Assume the generic reaction shown here. When that reaction is over, that is to say when it reaches equilibrium, we would assay the concentrations of the reactants and or the products. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is the product of the concentrations of the products divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants, as shown in the equation. More accurately, the concentrations would have to be raised to a power determined by the stoichiometry of the reaction, as in the second generic example shown here, in which A plus 2B goes to C plus 2D. Then the K equilibrium, or the equilibrium constant, is equal to the concentration of C times the concentration of D squared, divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. Consider this hypothetical reaction. A plus B goes to C plus D. After measuring the concentration of reactants and products at equilibrium, we would calculate the equilibrium constant, the KEQ, and show it to be 4.5 in this example. I can tell you immediately that this reaction is exergonic. So how do I know? From the Boltzmann equation. If the K equilibrium, the equilibrium constant, is greater than 1, then the natural log of the equilibrium constant will be greater than 0, making delta G0 negative. If the equilibrium constant is positive, it means that the product of the concentrations of the products is larger than that of the reactant. In other words, at equilibrium, the overall concentration of products is going to be higher than the concentration of reactants. By definition, then, the expression minus R times T times the natural log of the equilibrium constant from the Boltzmann equation will be negative. Go ahead and check that out for yourself. We say that such a reaction favors products because the concentration of the products is generally higher than that of the reactants. And we say, therefore, that the reaction is energetically favorable under standard conditions. Such a reaction is defined as exergonic. 
and note the unequal equilibrium arrows in this reaction that are telling you the same thing. The long arrow is pointing to the products, meaning there will be more product at equilibrium than reactant. By the same token, the reverse reaction, written this way, C plus D going to A plus B, must be, we say, endergonic, or energetically unfavorable in a closed system under standard conditions. Here, the equilibrium constant for an endergonic reaction will, by definition, be less than 1. Figure that out by looking at the Boltzmann equation. The log or natural log of a number less than 1 will be negative, so that minus r times t times the natural log of keq, or the equilibrium constant, a negative number, will be positive. OK, to sum up, the change in enthalpy, or delta H, is a measurable quantity using a calorimeter. And the standard free energy change, or delta G0, is a calculable number using equilibrium constants and plugging it into the Boltzmann equation. Knowing delta H and delta G0, it's a simple matter to calculate the entropy change for the reaction.